What's up everyone, it's Caddy with Money Vesting. In this video, we are gonna be talking about Apple, ticker symbol AAPL. We'll be going over everything you need to know about on Apple. So we're gonna go over the revenues, earnings, cash flows, and the craziest thing about Apple in the last 10 years, what have they done? We'll talk about that. As always, if you enjoyed this video, find it helpful, make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you're just joining us for the first time, the link to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below if you're interested in joining us. And of course, getting access to all the educational videos and tutorials and options and fundamental analysis, as well as our trade alerts and trade ideas, swing trading ideas and options alerts and all the other things included in the Discord down in the description below. The link is going to be available down there. So first things first, we're going to talk a little bit about the fundamentals of the company before we jump into the actual intrinsic value calculation. I'll be going over exactly where I believe Apple should be trading at in terms of how much it's actually worth. And then we'll talk a little bit about the technicals. But this right here is all the fundamentals of Apple that you need to know about. So if I kind of condense this into this table, which I think is going to be a lot more easier to digest, but going over to the revenues, this came in a little bit shy of $400 billion for Apple. So yes, pretty staggering number, 8% growth year over year. iPhone revenues of those $394 billion was $211 billion for the company. So you'll notice that 54% of the revenue is still coming from iPhone. iPhone is literally their flagship product, right? Without iPhone, Apple is nothing, right? So Apple is pretty much synonymous with iPhone. iPhone is it. Services has been going higher. So you'll notice that once they, you know, when they initially launched services, um, they were only at nine to 10%. And that business has now more than doubled to now 19%, pretty consistent, 19 to 20% in the last three years and came in at just over $76 billion. Gross profit margins, pretty good at 43%, $170 billion. Operating income margins at 30%, just shy of $120 billion. And we've got bottom line profitability, just shy of $100 billion in net income, uh, with margins sitting at 25%. Shares are sitting at over $16 billion. Shares outstanding, and we've got an EPS, that's an earnings per share, of just over $6.00. And 11 cents and jumping over 8.8% with EBITDA coming at about $130 billion. That's uh, the 33% uh, EBITDA margin. And the market cap, of course, as of right now, it's sitting at a little bit over $2.4 trillion. But the craziest thing about Apple is the fact that they have bought back close to $600 billion worth of shares in the last 10 years. That is 35% of their float they have bought back in the last 10 years. Talk about share buybacks. Apple is a behemoth when it comes to repurchases. And the fact that they have over a half a trillion dollars in share buybacks just goes to show how they've been able to boost their earnings per share by obviously buying back 35% of their float and keeping their EPS growth pretty darn high. So this is the exact number. So right here, you'll notice that from 2010 to 2012, shares outstanding have gone from 25.9 billion shares outstanding. So that's the number right there, down to 16.3 billion shares outstanding. And again, these are just straight numbers. And that's a 4.85% CAGR um, on a six year basis. And on a 12 year basis, 3.77%, meaning that they are buying back 3.77% every single year, their shares outstanding, right? They're pretty much buying back their shares by 3.77% every single year. That's how much the share count is going down every single year. And on total, close to 37% on a 12 year basis. Absolutely staggering. That's over $554 billion. And as a result, their earnings per share has gone from 54 cents to over $6.11, growing by over 22% on a compounded annual growth basis. And on a total basis, it's up over a thousand percent, even though, even though their net income is up 612% during that same time and up 17% on a compounded annual basis. So you see that difference? Net income is up 600%, but their earnings per share is up over a thousand percent. That's the power of compounding and, and kind of working in your favor because you are buying back shares and the company is repurchasing their own stock every single year. Um, 
But nonetheless, I mean, these are some staggering numbers to begin with. But when it, when we talk about the future, right, when we talk about the future of Apple, if you come back to this spreadsheet, if you take a look at some of these numbers over here um, and, you know, where they're making majority of their revenues and kind of that split between hardware and services, you know, a lot of analysts and a lot of investors have pretty much mentioned that Apple's services business has a lot of potential. And I agree. I think it's got a lot of potential moving forward and it can really capitalize on that potential uh, opportunity there because if you take a look at their install base which I do have by the way over here somewhere yeah so install base you know they've got over 1.4 billion hardware devices right including their MacBooks and iPhones and iPads and their watches all their accessories combined 1.4 billion install base is pretty significant and they can do a lot of things with the ecosystem that they have built and, you know, ever since I switched over to a MacBook, ever since I switched over to an iPhone, I just don't see myself switching over back to Windows or Android because now I'm like part of the Apple ecosystem. It's a lot easier and kind of used to it now. And frankly, I do like the products, right? The design, the, the simplicity, everything's obviously a lot better. Can't speak to whether it is more powerful or not. I, I think Windows, there's a lot more things that you can do. Certainly there are Windows computers that are a lot more powerful than the Mac. But, you know, the Mac definitely has its own appeal, especially in North America, when everyone pretty much has a MacBook or an iPhone or one or both. Um, however, when it comes to Apple as a company, the valuation definitely does not justify, you know, the, the growth rate. In other words, the valuation is certainly a lot higher than what the growth rate tends to be or suggest uh, Apple's growth rate is going to be over the next five years because if you take a look at the valuation for Apple right now on a trailing basis it's trading at 24 times PE right 24 times earnings when on average over the last you know 12 years or 13 years the average P multiple for Apple has been 19 right 19.27 there's been instances where Apple is actually trading at a lot cheaper than where it is right now so for example you know back in 2015 2016 2017 it was trading at 13 to 18 times earnings even as low as 10 to as much as 11 um, and then you know during the pandemic and of course ever since COVID we have just been accustomed to a much higher P multiple for Apple trading at 38 29 24 so even though it's coming down it is still pretty elevated and price to sales, you'll notice we're trading at a little bit over six times trailing sales, when on average, Apple has traded at around 4.32. That's the average for the last 12, 13 years. And then price to free cash flow, on average, it's trading at 17. And right now, it's at a little bit over 21. So no doubt, Apple trades at a premium right now. It does because you've got the valuations right in front of you. Again, these are facts. This is data. Um, and on average, valuation's been a lot lower versus where it's trading right now. As you can see, this kind of this chart. And simply, all you have to do is kind of figure out, okay, what's the average multiple for Apple and where is it trading? It is coming off of those 2020 lows, uh, 2020 highs, excuse me. It was obviously very, very high back then. And it's definitely coming off of those highs, but it's still pretty elevated in my opinion. And when we do some forecasting for the company, and by the way, just wanted to quickly go over this. This is the breakdown on where the revenue is coming from for Apple. So America's again, 40% of the revenue is coming from America's. We got 23, 25% from Europe, 7 to 8% from Japan. Asia Pacific accounts for about 7% as well. And China revenue has gone down from 2015. So earlier it was 25%, then it dropped down to 23, then 21, then 20 then we drop down to 17, 15, and right now it's about 19%. So it has come down, except for China. It looks like all other markets are either flat or higher. So if you take a look at Americas, we went from 40 to 43%. Europe, we went from 22 to 24%. In Japan, we're pretty stable at 7 to 8%. In Asia Pacific, we're pretty stable at 6 to 7%. China is the only market that they are kind of reducing a little bit in terms of revenue. Um, and of course, they're also moving their, their production and they're building new factories over in India as well to kind of move away from China uh, as well. So that again, that that only, you know, bodes well for the company over the long term. But when it comes to the growth rates, right, when it comes to what the company can actually grow by over the next um, five years or 10 years, that's when it becomes a little bit more debatable. Because if you take a look at net income, six year CAGR is 14%, right? 14%. If you take a look at 12 year CAGR, it's 17.7%. So I'm going to be I'm going to be using, uh, you know, closer to 14 to 15 percent, because if you take a look at the analyst estimates and if you go over to our spreadsheet, analysts themselves have a really, really low growth rate for Apple right now, expecting six bucks in earnings per share for 2023 and that number to grow to over eight dollars and fifty eight cents by 2028 and then to that grow to thirteen dollars and thirty two cents by 2032. So these are the growth rates from analysts themselves. 
And we understand that Apple has been able to grow by about 16, 17% over the last 12 years and about 12 to 13% over the last six years on a net income basis, not on an earnings per share basis, but a net income basis. So if I am being generous today and for Apple, let's just go with about 10% in growth for earnings per share for growth rate for the net income, right? Net income growth rate. We go with a 12% discount rate, 10% margin of safety. And when it comes to share dilution, if you come back to some of these analysis here, uh, we know that on a six year basis, the company's bought back about 4.85%. So more recently though, as the company's more flushed with cash, they're doing more buybacks more aggressively. And as a result, this number is much higher than if you take a look at the 12 year Kager. 12 year Kager is negative 3.77% uh, for the last six years, it's 5, 4.85%. So if I go with 4%, kind of like that mid guidance, if I go with negative 4% here, so minus four is what we're gonna plug in. That means their share count is gonna go from 16.3 billion, which is right now, down to 13.3 billion. So again, just insane amount of share buybacks coming in from the company here. Um, and again, 2022 EPS was about six bucks and 11 cents. We're expecting 10% growth over the next uh, five years and a P multiple. Now, this is where things are going to get quite interesting because I'm going to get all sorts of comments. You know, what's the most appropriate P multiple for Apple? Let me know down in the comment section below. What do you think? What is the most appropriate P multiple for Apple? But if you take a look at their average, and this is an average of the last 14 years, it's traded at 19.27, right? 19.27 is the average P multiple that it's traded at. Even if you take the median, right, which is the mid value of the last 14 years, it is 17.27. So that's the middle value, 17.27. So You've got an average sitting at 19.27 and a median sitting at 17.27. I'm going to go with that mid guidance. I'm actually going to go with 18 PE multiple. So let's just plug in 18 over here and we get a fair value of close to $110 per share, even after the buyback. Now imagine, imagine if the company did not do any buyback, 0%, Apple's fair value would drop down to $90. Why? Because the growth rate for net income is not as strong as what people believe it to be. It is mostly a game of earnings per share manipulation in my personal opinion. And God, I love Apple. It's fantastic. As a consumer, I love their products. As an investor also, it's a fantastic company. However, we can't ignore the fact that Apple is just crazy over share buybacks. And that's how they're actually able to grow their earnings per share. If you simply take the net income, yes, it's grown, but not at the same rate. Nowhere near close to the same rate. I mean, 13.9% in six year basis versus almost 20% in earnings per share growth. And that again is a difference between, you know, 600% versus over a thousand percent. It is a good company, very good, consistent, strong company, but I don't know if it can be considered as a growth stock, so to speak. Like even if, even if you go to, let's say 12%, right? Let's just go with a little bit higher. Let's just say that Apple in the last five years was able to grow earnings by, let's see, come back here. So in the last six years, Apple grew net income by 14%. Let's just go with 14%. Let's see where we end up. So 14% with a P multiple of 18, we end up at about $132, which is not bad, right? I mean, Apple trading right now 152, the fair value ends up at 132, considering a 14% growth rate and an 18 times PE multiple. But right now, as it stands, Apple is definitely trading at a 24 times PE multiple. And on a trailing basis and a growth rate, you know, it's closer to around 12%. That's why we're closer to 150s, 160s for Apple at the moment. But, you know, if I'm being very honest to myself, if I'm going with a little bit of a decent, you know, growth rate of about 12% here, um, let's see, so 12% and an 18 times P multiple, that I think is something that I would be comfortable with. So not going 10%, that's a little too conservative, not going 14%, that's a bit too generous. 12% growth rate and 18 times P multiple, I'd say 120s, 120, 121 would be an appropriate fair value for Tesla, uh, for Apple right now. And this is the entire sort of pattern. So of course, you know, we're seeing uh, consistent lower highs and lower lows. So there's a very strong resistance for Apple at 177. So this right here, very, very strong area of resistance for the company. And right now we are getting tagged at this level at close to 157, which is also a resistance for Apple right now. And for the most part, we're just trading inside this channel of consistent lower highs and lower lows. So every time we come up, we get rejected, sell right back down. So this is the downtrend within which Apple right now is trading at. And right now we're coming up to that resistance once again at 157 for Apple. So let me know your thoughts, honest thoughts. And what do you think about Apple at 152? Are you buying, selling, holding? What are your thoughts? And in my opinion, I think Apple's got a lot of potential. No doubt services businesses can explode in the future and net income can continue to grow at 10 to 
but it's the earnings per share <laughs> share buybacks is what really is driving that EPS growth higher. Um, and the fact that P multiple is running at 24, 25 times seems a bit rich uh, for me personally, considering that the earnings growth um, is mostly driven by share buybacks and the net income growth is really not that super strong. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. 120s is the level that I'm paying attention to that's going to be in line with this support around here, 122, 123, pretty much exactly where we were at the beginning of this year. Uh, but again, let me know your, your comments and your um, you know analysis down in the comment section below. As always, happy investing and I will see you all in the next video.